Imagine earning £5,000 a month while doing whatever you want. No more meetings, no more deadlines, 100% financial freedom. This might sound like a pipe dream, but it's a milestone that I passed after many years of investing in property and lots of our clients have reached the same goal. So in this video, I'm going to take you through our buy to let blueprint, which explains three strategies that you can use to hit £5,000 a month. And by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what to do, how to start and the best strategy for you. But before we get into the strategies, you need to understand something important. If you want to reach £5,000 a month, you need to think of investing like gardening. When you start your garden, you plant some seeds and start watering, excited to see them grow, but then nothing happens. However, after a while, those first signs of life start pushing through. Over time, you keep watering them week after week, month after month, you start to see the slow but gradual process. So this is the realistic expectation that everyone has of gardening. However, when it comes to investing money, this logic goes completely out the window. People behave completely differently. They invest their money, they check their investments every day, and they expect to see a return immediately. And when that doesn't happen, they say it doesn't work and move on to something else. But that's the equivalent of planting a seed and expecting to see a jungle the next day. And if you have that mentality, you're going to struggle to hit £5,000 a month. Because whatever online gurus might say, in property, there are no quick wins. So if you want to make these strategies work, you need to understand that if you rush things, you will end up with a bunch of weeds. But if you're patient and you give your investments time, you will have a very fruitful and very profitable garden. So now that's clear, I'm going to tell you about three different investors with different skill sets and financial situations and explain the strategy that each of them use to hit £5,000 a month, going from slowest to fastest. So first up, we have Paul, a software developer making £150,000 a year in Manchester. Now, Paul was making plans for his future and decided to go down the property route. He'd already saved up £50,000, which he used as a 25% deposit on a £200,000 flat. But Paul was smart. He didn't just buy the first place he found within his budget. He made sure to do his research and he got a really good deal in an up and coming area. So he rented this place out for £1,200 a month. And after he paid his mortgage and all his other costs, he was left with about £300 profit. Now, this certainly wasn't going to allow him to retire anytime soon, but it was still 300 quid more than he had before. And in the meantime, he was saving like mad to buy a second property and was putting away £10,000 a year. Now, this is where this strategy can go downhill. After all, you have to invest money to make money and it can take years to save up. At this rate, it would have taken Paul another five years to buy his next property. But remember, Paul was smart. He'd chosen his property strategically. First, he worked hard to secure a property that was 5% less than it was truly worth. And in just two years, because he bought in the right place, prices in his local area exploded and it had gone up in value by 10%. So what did Paul do? Well, he refinanced the flat and pulled out £20,000. That, combined with his savings, bought him his next house. Now, his monthly profit was £600. Over the next 10 years, Paul slowly built his portfolio up to double figures. And thanks to his rents going up as well, now he makes over £5,000 in profit every month. That's enough to go part-time or take some extended time off to travel or whatever he wants. So this is the first strategy. Just keep buying passively. It sounds easy on paper, but this strategy takes time. Paul did it in 10, but it could take 20 plus years to hit the £5,000 mark. But if you're smart like Paul and invest in the right places, you won't have to save up all the money on your own because getting good deals, buying in the right places and refinancing can help you massively. And if you'd like to copy Paul's strategy, but don't necessarily have the time to do it yourself, that's something that we might be able to help you out with. So check out the link in the description. But if you feel this passive approach is a bit too slow for you, you might prefer options two or three. So option two is to go down the same route as Ali, who spent years working in construction. And by the time he'd reached 40 years old, he was sick and tired of spending his days on site. He wanted to use his skills in a different way. So what did he do? Well, he decided to take the skills that he'd developed working for other people and pour them into property investing. With a loan from his brother-in-law, Ali bought a semi-derelict house in Yorkshire for £140,000. It was in rough shape, but he saw the potential. And using their skills, they managed to renovate the property for just £30,000. Six months later, they sold it for £240,000. After splitting their profit 50-50, they each walked away with £30,000. Ali was delighted with their success and wanted to jump straight into another project. So he convinced his brother-in-law to invest again and they bought another house for £250,000. This time, they spent £20,000 on the renovation and flipped it for £320,000, walking away with a profit of £25,000 each. Ali now had more than enough profit to buy his first buy 
to let. Suddenly, he was making passive income every single month, all funded by the money he'd earned from his flips. From there, it was just rinse and repeat. Ali did some more flips and raised some more money. Then he bought another buy to let property and then another. By the time he was 50, Ali never worked a day in construction ever again. He lived completely passively off his buy to let income. Again, it's important to stress this is not a get rich quick scheme, but if you're patient, eventually your garden will grow. However, if you're looking for an even faster way to get to the £5,000 a month mark, Nikki's strategy could be for you. Nikki was a young, ambitious woman from Leeds who wanted to put her money to work as soon as possible. She liked the idea of property, but wasn't sure if it was the best way to make her money grow quickly. Because when you're investing passively, you might expect a yearly return of somewhere around 7%. In other words, if you invest £100,000, you'll get £7,000 back in rental profit. But one day, Nikki heard about something different, where the return is kind of up in the air. If you play your cards right, you could make double the return or even higher. But if you make mistakes, you will get much less. But Nikki was young and wasn't afraid of taking a risk. And one day she was reading about the growing demand for student rooms and the stars aligned. Instead of renting out a whole house to one family, why not rent out each room individually and boost her profits? So this is the third, potentially faster option. Buying a property to turn into an HMO, a house in multiple occupation, or in other words, a property with lots of separate rooms being rented out to individuals like a student house. So Nikki started doing research and after months of shopping around, she bought her first place for £240,000. It was pretty run down, but she made some renovations with the help of her friend who works in construction. Then she rented out each room for £500 and at the end of the month to claim a profit of £1,000. So over the next two years, Nikki built up her savings again. When property prices in Leeds rose, she refinanced, pulling out £25,000 in equity. And this, along with the rent she'd saved up, allowed her to buy her second HMO. With two properties under her belt, Nikki was now earning £2,000 a month after expenses. But she didn't stop there. She continued saving and reinvesting, using the profits from her HMOs to buy new properties. By year eight, she had five HMOs, each bringing in around £1,000 in monthly profit, and she'd reached the £5,000 mark. However, there is one thing that all three of these strategies relies on. And if Nikki, Ali or Paul had got this wrong, they would have wasted lots of time and money. So check out this video next, where I teach you the skill that every investor needs to make sure their properties are profitable.